greeting salutations. I mean, you can see it. You can see it right here. <laughs> what we're going to do right now is get into iCloud. It's really interesting how much we talk about the benefits of iCloud. And here, at Mr. Mac, we oftentimes pitch like, look, you, you, you need it. And today we're going to go over exactly what it is and how it works and then why you need it. And I know what you're thinking. Can you make iCloud fun? Like there's no way you can make iCloud fun, right? And I can do it. We're going to go for it. We're going to try and make it fun. I got this new, like we can do this. Oh boy. All right. Look, we've talked all about what it can do, but what is it? Is this image helpful? Is this thing that we're looking at helping us at all? And if you go to the internet and you type, what is the cloud? And you actually put that in the search bar. These are the kind of images that you get. This isn't helpful, right? We understand the cloud represents something that the computers are connected to, but just drawing a picture of a cloud and saying, this is what it is, not doing the trick. So when we talk about iCloud, this is what we mean. It's a building, it's like the size of a super Walmart plus a super HEB. It's a massive data center or a server farm as they're sometimes called. They're often located in the North because they run real hot. We got nothing but computers in there. And it's a lot cheaper to cool them up in New England. So your Apple server may not actually be located in California, but when you take a photo with your iPhone, that goes to this place. And after it arrives, it says, okay, great. Thanks for the photo. By the way, does Steve or Karen or Gina have any other Apple devices that we want to send this photo to? And you said, yeah, we got an iPad, an iMac, another phone, maybe even an Apple Watch. So whatever data, whether it's phone or contacts, calendar, all of those are going to head to this location and then get distributed to your other devices. That path then continues. If you make an edit to a photo back to the farm, all the way down to the other devices. Inside one of these data centers, you have rows and rows of servers or computers. You might think of them as hard drives. These hard drives you rent a space from. And so you pay your 99 cents or your $2.99 a month. And then your space is where your data is stored. Now we've drawn it here like it's a rental space, like it's one little part of this entire computer system. There's actually tremendous amounts of redundancy and, and it's spread out across several different computers, which is why if you think about this whole experience, like it's a hard drive that is a virtual cable connected from your device, like your MacBook, all the way to this data center, your personal information is a lot safer because they have redundancies. I remember when I was going to consider buying iCloud or I thought, maybe I'll just go get a hard drive to back up everything that's on my computer. My buddy, Jonathan, he said, you can go spend 60 or 70, this was a few years ago, it might've been like a hundred bucks to get a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Or you can give Apple a dollar, you know, $12 a year, and they'll back up your data 50 times. So that redundancy and knowing that it's safe on the cloud and encrypted can be a huge peace of mind and also just so much easier than lugging one of these extra drives around and making sure to plug it in every two weeks. So when you think about asking yourself the question of what is it or when other people come ask you because now you know, you can say, look, think about the cloud like it's this data center. It's a physical building, it's a place. It's not up in the, in the sky. It travels through the sky to get there, but you, you know what I'm saying. Okay, quiz time. There are tons of data services. I'll go ahead and give you the one up here in the top corner. Obviously that's iCloud, that's the one that we're talking about. The one in the middle at the top, you might also recognize and that one we all know is Google Drive. And then the one that kind of started it all, at least at the consumer level, Dropbox. Now, the one over here to my right, your left, you may not recognize the title, but the actual icon is what? Positive, if you wanna look it up, <laughs> it's Microsoft. And Azure is their enterprise level cloud storage solution. So if you're not a business, you probably haven't heard of this. And the other one though, that's kind of the current grandfather or godfather of them all, Amazon Web Services. Most of the internet runs on this stuff. And you may not be saving your pictures and photos and text messages in it, but lots of businesses are storing their websites, their backups, all of their data inside of that file system. Now, all the way at the end, we have OneDrive, but of course the master for all of the Apple devices is iCloud and you wanna have every single service activated. Now, in some other videos, we'll go over exactly what those other services are and how they work. We've talked about contacts and calendars, but the one that is gonna be most important for most people, of course, is photos. 
getting the photos synced across all your devices from iPhone to iPad to Mac. You take it on one, it just magically shows up on the other one. That is going to work best with iCloud Plus and making sure you have enough storage. And when you pay for iCloud Plus, you get all kinds of other features that come with it free of charge. I it, It's almost like because it's free, it's like, ah, I don't need to really look into that. It, yeah, I understand that. If we charge an extra $4 for it, you may find more excitement to dive into some of these features, but you can protect your, your data traffic with iCloud Private Relay, which is basically a built-in VPN for Safari. You got the hide my email feature. So you can sign up for mailing lists. If you go to Macy's or Target or Lowe's, and you want the 5% discount, but you want to be able to stop them sending you marketing emails at any time, this is a great tool for that. Home Secure Video, you know, you might have a Ring account, you might have a Google Nest camera. All of those are starting to be integrated with the included iCloud Drive storage package. And then, of course, you can actually share with any iCloud Drive. It used to be $2.99 and up, but even the $0.99 cent plan now you can share your 50 gigabytes with another family member so that both of you have one built. You get a lot of questions on this one. They say, hey, can my, I don't think we're hiding anything, but it's just like, is my stuff going to get mixed up with my spouses? Are they going to see my photos? And when I save a contact, are they going to see the contacts is going to mix in with theirs? No, it is your own separate part of the storage facility that you guys are renting but you only have one bill to pay for it all. So let me know in the comments, what is your favorite part of iCloud? Is it just saving everything? Is it being able to disguise your email address with soup32kfan at iCloud.com? Is it being able to use your iCloud storage to actually store terabytes worth of home security footage? Or is it the VPN that is even more secure than traditional VPNs with iCloud Private Relay? Maybe it's even the fact that Apple has said no to governments and other organizations coming in and saying, hey, we need to get into that data. Apple's saying, line in the sand, not our customers. It's a whole wide world out there. And most importantly, it's a very special world between you and your family and y'all's memories. So make sure to make the investment, that $12 a year, that $36 a year, and keep all of that information safe and secure encrypted and shared across all your devices. Catch you on the next one.